Hello Chaz. Drug discovery can take several paths. What is currently the most prominent method? So it's maybe worth stepping back and just appreciating that all the drug molecules that are out there, they all bind to what we call proteins. Now in humans, there's about 26,000 of these proteins. At the moment, what we tend to do is we run what we call high-throughput screens against these proteins. So we take one of these 26,000 proteins that there are in humans, we develop an assay system which can detect whether a small molecule is binding to that protein and leading to a functional effect. So we develop assay systems which are high-throughput uh, and cheap. And they have to be high-throughput and cheap because, of course, usually what we want to do is we want to screen maybe several hundred thousand compounds quickly. Now, what happens is when we run that screen, after we put a million compounds through, maybe we might detect a hundred compounds that actually bind to a specific protein. How can we predict if a molecule can turn into a beneficial drug? So what we normally do is that we have various assay systems which mimic, if you like, or predict the benefit that we want. So what we tend to do in those assay systems is get a sense of what potency we need, uh, how much of the molecule we need to produce the desired effect. Um, we also, so that sort of get, gives us an idea of efficacy, so potential benefit with that molecule. What we also try and do is to get an idea of, is that molecule going to produce any undesirable effects? And then once we've done that, then of course we take them into what we call phase one studies. So this is where we take the molecule for the first time into humans. And normally in phase one, the individuals are healthy volunteers. And we try and get an idea of what's the highest dose we can go to without running into side effects in humans. So what we then would do is go into a phase two study. So a phase two study is when, for the first time, you actually go into patients and you actually find out if your molecule actually does anything in patients. Then if we get efficacy in phase two, we will go into phase three studies. And these are much bigger studies, maybe 500 patients each. And normally we do maybe two or three of those studies. And each of these phase three studies can cost several hundred million pounds. And once we've done the phase three, then of course we register it and launch it. How do you overcome the profit motive of industry when collaborating on drug discovery in an academic environment? I think it's again worth stepping back and appreciating that uh, any industry has to make a profit to survive. Pharma, the pharmaceutical industry, wants to collaborate with academia. They realise that there are certain things that they are extremely good at, and pharma is extremely good at, for example, running high-throughput screens. They're extremely good at converting lead molecules into clinical candidates. They're very good at doing things like the toxicology studies. They're very good at doing the big clinical studies, the phase 2b or the phase 3 studies. And of course, they're very good at um, dealing with the regulators and preparing the relevant documents and then launching the molecules. You know, we in academia, I don't think, will ever be able to do that because we just do not have the sort of infrastructure, the scale or the resources, etc. But I think what pharma appreciates is that what they are not good at, and frankly I think we as a scientific community, all of us are not particularly good at, is what we call target validation or target discovery. So it's our ability to say that one of these 26,000 proteins that each of us has, that one of these proteins, if we modulate it, so we stimulate it or we inhibit it, it's actually going to, make, it's going to make a drug which is going to be beneficial in patients. We won't ever get rid of the profit motive of these organisations, um, and, and we need to keep that, in fact. Um, but I think by uh, 
being free with our science and our knowledge and our expertise and not constraining it with intellectual property, we can bring together many organisations, many private organisations, and I think that puts us in a a much better position to um, accelerate science and hopefully facilitate drug discovery. Chaz, thank you very much. Thank you, Karen.